cup will be filled. Let's stand up to pray. Today is 29. No problem for everybody. Globally, you will see the glory of God. Anything standing as a hindrance tonight, God will knock it out and knock it down. <coughs> Open your mouth and pray right now. Globally, whatsoever the power holding your miracle, the Lord will knock them out. The Lord will knock them down. The man of God is fully loaded. Tonight, your cup will fill to a brim. Whatsoever power working against you, the Lord will stop them tonight. The name of Jesus is a strong tower. The righteous run it into it and is saved. You'll be saved tonight. The Lord will touch you with his power globally. As you're praying, the Lord is by you there. What do you want? What do you desire? The Lord will give it to you. Remember globally, whatsoever my heavenly father has not planted shall be rooted out. Whether the enemy planted it in your brain, in your womb, any part of your system, the Lord will yank it out. Yokes will be broken tonight. Globally, chains will be broken tonight. The Lord Jesus is the iron breaker. He's the chain breaker. He's the mountain mover. He's the burden bearer. He's the solution giver. Tonight, there will be solution. Anywhere you are, whether in China, anywhere, there will be a divine touch that will be, bring a divine miracle. The wonders of the cross. The wonders of the cross. The cross will crush every problem. In the name of Jesus. Why are you here? What do you want? And what can the Lord will do for you? As you open your mouth now, heaven is open. You will receive a touch. You will receive miracle. Open your mouth and pray now. What do you want? What do you desire? What do you want God to do for you? As you're praying there, the Lord will locate you. Whether in Australia, any part of the world, God will remember you today. He will remember you. Pray, Lord, fill my cup. The Lord will fill your cup tonight. As the word of God will be coming out like a dagger. Lives will be changed. The Lord will transform your life tonight. Anything remaining in your life, the Lord will flush it out. Fear not. The Lord will help you. The Lord will strengthen you.
begin to thank God because the Lord has answered your prayer. There will be a shout tonight, a shout of miracle, a shout of deliverance. I believe, you believe, I believe, globally I believe, the Lord will surprise you tonight. Wherever you are standing, Globally, the Lord will locate you there. He knows you by your name. He knows the challenges you are passing through. Thank God for those who are praying. In the name of Jesus, if you believe that God has answered your prayers, can I hear a louder amen? Our pastor is loaded. Join me to welcome Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumui. You are welcome, sir. Praise the Lord. Uh -uh. I said praise the Lord. Tonight, the Lord will load you with blessing. Power. Authority. The goodness of God upon your life. Today, something will happen you'll never forget. Are you there? Why are you there? Father, we thank you today. And we bless your name. We glorify you. You are here for everyone. Our blessing is here. Our redemption is here. Everything you have for your people, fall down today in Jesus' name. And I pray that, Lord, you turn every life around. What you have never seen, what you have never had, what we never possess, today we will have, we will see, we will possess in Jesus' name. Confirm your miracle power upon everyone. We well, thank you, Lord, because we know it is done. In Jesus' name, we pray. I am blessed. Say it for yourself. I am blessed. Your blessing will not pass you by. God bless you. You can sit down. Today, we're still talking about the cross. And I welcome you tonight to the wonder of the cross. I welcome you tonight to the blessing, abundant blessing of God upon your life through the cross in Jesus' name. I'm talking to you tonight on something special. It's special for you. It's special for me. And it's special for everyone. Abundant life. Shout abundant life. If that's what you are going to possess, shout abundant life. Abundant life through Christ's death on the cross. Christ's death on the cross. That's what provides everything. Everyone, everywhere, in every nation, and in every locality, abundant life is coming to you tonight. And when we finish the message, and we pray, the, the heavens will open. Yeah. Blessings will be showered upon you. You will not leave this place without 
your miracle in Jesus name come with me now to Romans chapter 5 and I'm reading from verse 6 Romans chapter 5 verse 6 for when we were yet without strength in due time Christ died for the ungodly you might have heard that verse before but many people they read the bible they hear the bible they don't understand when we well, were yet without strength i asked somebody when are you going to come to christ oh i want to become better first i'm too dirty now i'm too weak now i'm too helpless now i want to pump up myself, have strength, have power, have righteousness, turn over a new leaf before I come. They have never heard that when we were yet without strength, when we were yet without power, when we were yet without hope, when we were yet without energy, when we were yet without a new life, when we were dirty, when we were sinful, when we were weak, that's when Christ said, I have come. If you can save yourself, it will not come. If you have the energy by yourself, it will not come. If you have succeeded by yourself, it will not come. When we were yet without salvation, we were yet without the truth. We were yet without redemption. We were yet without emancipation, freedom. We were yet without godliness. We were yet without any treasure. We were yet without healing. That's when it came. For when we were yet without strength, in due time, this is your time. Tonight, this is your time. In due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Some people think that he died for those who are perfect. And when I'm perfect, I will come and then present my perfection before God and say, Lord, I'm perfect now. Can you see me? If you are perfect, how do you need salvation? Some people think it is when I am upright, I am righteous, I'm a judge, righteous man, and then everybody is pointing at me, it's a good man, it's a godly man. Then I can come to Christ and say, Christ, hello, can you save me? You don't need salvation then. He died for the ungodly. He died for the ungodly. We are ungodly. We're sinful. We're bad. And Christ died for those who are bad. Bad people, when you go through Christ, you will go to heaven. Good people, when they go through themselves, their own goodness, I am okay, I am good, I am righteous, I am up, I'm perfect, you will go to hell. But when you understand, nothing in my hand I bring. Simply to the cross, I cling. Christ, rock of ages, claim for me. Let me hide myself in thee. Let the water and the blood that flow from your wounded river side be of sin, the double kill. And then you come like that, you ungodly, it will save you. I said it will save you. That's why I come tonight to tell you about life, abundant life, fruitful life, righteous life, happy life, huge life, great life through Christ's death on the cross. You'll be a partaker. Where are you there? It will come to you in Jesus' name. But when? We were yet without strength. In due time, Christ died for the ungodly. If you're ungodly, he died for you. 
If you are sinful, he died for you. If you are helpless, he died for you. If you are dirty, he died for you. He will hold your hand today and pull you out of that well of dirt and defilement. He will clean you up. He will present you to the Father. He'll say, Father, look at the trophy of my death on the cross and then the father will hold you spiritually he'll say welcome home i have a special place in heaven for you he has a special place in heaven for me god bless you it will be done three things we're looking at in the message today number one i got the love demonstrated on the cross that word agape means divine. If the love of God is the kind of love nobody has ever tasted on earth until Christ came. Agape love demonstrated on the cross. Number two, angry lions destroyed on the cross. Do you know every angry lion after your life pursuing you Christ destroyed them on the cross. And when you come to Christ, the greatest of all lions, and the smallest of the lions, and the medium lion, the local lion, the village lion, the tribal lion, and the imaginary lion, all of them from the cross, the thunder will come from the cross strike at the lion chasing your life and you are free i am free number three abundant life distributed from the cause have you ever seen good things being distributed some of us we go to school Appearance do not have the money to buy exercise books and all the other things. And then the government provided all those papers, exercise books, pencils, and pen. And as we're coming, everyone will just line up. And then that from the government is distributed to everyone. The government of heaven has sent me to tell you. That everything you need has been provided by the government of heaven for your soul, for your spirit, for your life, and for your family. And there is distribution tonight. Distribution tonight. That's all right, my sister, yours is coming. My brother, yours is coming. My son, my daughter, yours is coming distribution from heaven abundant life sorrow will pass away crying will pass away all the heartaches everything will pass away abundant life distributed from the cross let's go to number one number one agape love demonstrated on the cross I was reading to you Romans chapter 5, verse 6. Let's look at that again. For when we were without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. Look at verse 8. In verse 8, it tells us, For God commendeth his love toward us. He commendeth is love toward us toward you when god looks at you he's not angry at you when god looks at you he's not frowning at you when god looks at you he's not saying that's another wood for the fire never he looks at you with the eyes and the mind and the heart of love and god commended his love toward us extraordinary love heavenly love agape love divine love a kind of love that had never been god 
loves you. What am I talking to? God loves you. And when you come, that's why we're not afraid when we're coming for salvation. Will he save me? Of course. Will he receive me? Yes. Will he have mercy on me? Yes. Will he cleanse my sin? Yes. Why? But God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, not sins, while we were yet sinners, not clean, while we were yet sinners, defiled, rejected by men, criticized by people, put down and pushed away from every good society while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He died for you. I said he died for you. And you understand, it's not that, you know, I'm trying to you know, reduce this, I'm trying to take away that. The way you are right there at this moment, that we come. And the Lord, in his agape love, will receive you in Jesus' name. Look at verse 9. In verse 9, it tells us, it says, much more than being justified by his blood. Being justified not by water, not by oil, not by traditional religion. Being justified not by the ceremony you can do by yourself. Being justified by his blood. We shall be saved from wrath, from anger, from indignation through him. No anger upon your life anymore. There's no wrath waiting for you anymore. All you have to do is to come to Christ. And the moment you come to Christ, all the wrath and the anger and the judgment will be absorbed. And then you're free. No wrath on your head. No wrath in your life. No wrath, anger of heaven around you. And then uh, when it comes time to go to heaven, wrath will not meet you. Love will meet you because he has agape love demonstrated on uh, the cross. And then in verse 10, uh, it says, For if we, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God. Look at that. When we were enemies, we were reconciled unto God. There was a man that made himself an enemy of God. He did bad, bad things, terrible things. The man was cruel. He wanted to crush the church of God. He went everywhere. Anywhere he heard that somebody belonged to Christ, he will take him and he want to put him in the prison. And then to show that even as enemies, God does not keep enmity with anybody. And I want to tell you tonight, he doesn't keep enmity with anybody here. He's waiting for you and he's calling you. He's saying, you are the one having a threat for God, a threat for the Bible, a threat for Christ. And then Christ came to Saul. You see, the believers could not go to him. If they went to him, he'll say, ah, you're a believer. You believe in Christ. You are the one I've been looking for. He'll take him and then put him in the prison. And when the man was so much of an enemy, then the Lord himself went to him and said, Saul, Saul, why are you an enemy? Why persecutest thou me? Who are you, Lord? He said, I am Jesus. Somebody shout, Jesus. He saved that man. I'm happy to tell you tonight, he will save you. He will forgive you. 
Look at the bad things that man had done. And then the man said, what shall I do now? He didn't say, lie down, roll on the ground. He didn't say, go and fast for 40 days. He didn't say, what will you do? All those people you have tormented, go back to them. All the whips you gave them, let them give you the whip back. The punishment you gave to other people, the atrocities you did to other people, the world will do it to you. And then after that, when you have suffered enough, I'll forgive you. He said, no, I've forgotten everything. I've forgiven everything. Now, go to this place. I'll send one of my trusted disciples to you, and he will assure you of my love. If he did that to Saul of Tarsus tonight, he'll forgive you. All the ache and everything you have done that was painful, and you said, I did this, I did that, forgiveness will come. Did you hear that testimony today from Bael, sir? Did you hear? Let me see your hand if you heard. The man was not a good man, but instead of suffering for his sin, look at what God did. God forgave him and gave him a new life and there was no wrath, even the courts that should have said, uh -uh, you are one of those people that did that, then you are in for it. And he himself said, I thought they would have hanged him, or they would just give him life imprisonment. Tonight, that man is free. And tonight, you are free. Forgiveness comes to you. Salvation comes to you because when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Saved by his life. The love of God coming to you today, demonstrated on the cross of Calvary, will be demonstrated in your life today. Saved. Save, save. That love will turn your life around. L look at Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. I'm looking at verse 2 there. In Ephesians chapter 5, looking at verse 2, it says, And walk in love, as Christ also has loved us, and has given himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God for his sweet smelling savor. It says now, see what Christ has done. Christ has loved us and he has given himself how? It's like somebody is being approached by a deadly, terrible, dangerous person. And then you are walking like this, and then the fellow who is dangerous and deadly and evil, he shoots something at you. And then somebody comes in between you and the arrow from the enemy, the arrow of judgment and the arrow of punishment was coming and Christ stood between us and the arrow. The arrow gets to him, the arrow never gets to us. That's what Christ has done for you. And he says Christ has given himself an offering and a sacrifice to God for his sweet smelling savor. And now he says because of what he has done, your work in the gratitude of the love of God. If God so loved me like that, I will love God. If God spared my life like that, I will love God. If Christ has had mercy on me, even though I was bad, very bad, 
I will not love other people around me. The offense I committed has been forgiven. Therefore, anybody who has offended me too, I will walk in love. You are now a lovely brother after Christ comes to take residence inside you. And you are now a lovely sister after Christ has come and taken residence in you. And now you walk in love. I walk in love. I don't walk in anger. I walk in love. You will not walk in anger in Jesus' name. You will not walk in retaliation anymore in Jesus' name. You will not walk in violence wanting to hurt other people anymore in Jesus' name. Because Christ has loved you and he has given himself, he has given himself for you as an offering and a sacrifice to God. And that sweet smelling savor unto God, that sacrifice is accepted. I come now to point number two. Point number two, angry lions destroyed on the cross. Angry lions destroyed on the cross. Do you know, since man was created, there is a personality called the devil, called Satan. Let me tell you what happened. God created him as a beautiful, shining, great angel. He was in heaven. He had all those angels in heaven under his authority. And heaven, there's no suffering, there's no pain, there's no problem. And the Lord put him in a very good place. And he knew if he had continued like that forever and forever, he will be enjoying the presence and the glory of God. But something came to his mind. He said, this position I have, I'm not satisfied. I'm going to lift up my own throne above the throne of God. And then he began to converse. He brought politics to heaven. And he began to say, we're going to rebel. I'm going to fight against God. I'm going to lift up my throne above the throne of God. Will you join? Will you join? Will you join? Lo and behold, some angels joined him. And then God cast him out of heaven and has created a place, hellfire for him and his angels. And then God made man, wanted to show love unto man, Adam and Eve. And then Satan, like a lion, sneaked in and said, I have missed heaven, Adam and Eve, and all the people that God has created, they will also miss heaven. If I don't go there, they will not get there. That's why he came like a lion, angry, that he had been driven out of heaven. And he wants everyone, every human being, not to get to the place that he lost. That's why he came and Jesus recognized that. And Jesus said, I know the power of this lion. He's angry. And he's want to destroy everyone. That's why he said, before he destroys the whole of humanity, he came to the cross and died. And that death of Christ finished Satan. Gave him a spiritual knockout, knockdown, knockoff. He knocked him away, and he said, he will not destroy your life. Satan will not destroy your life. Angry lions will not destroy your life. All those people that want you dead, all those messengers of Satan, they want you dead before your time. Heaven says no. Heaven says there's a decree that you are precious in his sight. What is it? Precious. Brother Precious, where are you? Sister Precious, where are you? Because you are precious in the sight of the Lord, 
he stopped Satan and destroyed that angry lion on the cross for you. I said for you. Look at this in First Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, your enemy, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. You see, people don't understand when Satan or the messengers of Satan gives you a cause switch, but then he hides poison inside. He wants to destroy you. He says, this will make you high. This will make you bold. This will make you courageous. If you drink that sin, nobody will be able to stand before you. Actually, if he had called it poison, you will not want to drink. But because he said it will give you power, your muscles will become like the muscles of somebody who is lifting weight. And then you'll be as strong as anybody can be. And then he says, let me give you this one. This one original. When you take this and you light the fire and you put it there and you smoke it, it will go. To, you will even feel it in your brain. You'll strike your brain like this and shake your brain. And anywhere you go after that time, you'll be the king on the road and the king in the forest and the king everywhere. He's giving you poison. He wants to destroy you. He doesn't want you to know. He says, now, if you're going to be bold, go to that woman the wife of so and so but you know if you are a chicken if you are weak if you don't know what to do you know everybody will be looking at you down there but if you can take the bull by the horn and approach the wife of that man and have something with her then when you do that you'll be surprised energy will come to you you'll be bold you'll dare anyone is giving you poison that's why it says be sober be vigilant because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour but christ came and christ destroyed him on the cross of calvary for who i said for who Look at Colossians chapter 2, verse 14. Colossians chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 14. It says, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us. You know, every time we're taking the poison from the devil and we did something wrong, there was handwriting against us. That man has joined the devil. That woman has agreed with the devil. That boy has given in to Satan, the enemy. That girl has given in to Satan and writing against us, which was contrary to us. And then Christ, what did he do? He took it out of the way. Nailing it to his cross, Every bad thing you did that associated you with the devil, the heavenly father, because of the death of Christ, he has taken everything and nailed it to the cross. I thought you would say amen. At that location, anywhere you are, I want you to say amen. Look at verse 15, in verse 15, and having spoiled principalities and powers. He scattered principalities and powers. He knocked out principalities and powers. He overcame principalities and power. He destroyed principalities and powers. Now, they will not be on your way. Now, they will not double cross you. Now they will not disturb your sleep. Now they will not disturb your progress. 
because that angry lion and all the angry lions referred to as principalities and powers, the Lord has scattered them. He made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in each victory. Triumph, conquering, power for everyone in Jesus' name. Luke chapter 10, I'm reading from verse 18. Luke chapter 10, we're reading from verse 18. Here Jesus said, I beheld, and he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. He has fallen. Your enemy, he has fallen. Your adversary, he has fallen. Your destroyer, he has fallen. The one who said, if he doesn't get to heaven, you too will not get to heaven. He says, he's not getting there. You are not getting there. He has fallen. His watch, his intention, his purpose, his pursuit, wanting to get you and saying, you will not move forward. And he was going to stand in your way. And then the Lord pulled him down, and he has fallen, and he says, my son, my daughter, go ahead. When you receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, and when you say, he is my Lord, he is my Savior, everything that stands in your way, that the devil puts there, everything will vanish away and then and then look at verse 19 look at verse 19 and be i give you power when satan falls as you receive the lord as you accept the lord as you say yes it's my savior yes it's my lord then the lord will say don't go yet i give unto your power to tread on serpents and scorpions. Those are the messengers of Satan that he sends across, go and test him out, and go and bite him, and go and sting him. I'll be coming after, but go and do this force. And as they came in the day, in the night, from the bush, from the forest, from the river, and he called themselves whatever name, you have power. Somebody there, I have power. I give unto you. Hold on. If you are far away from him, how can he give unto you? If you don't turn and face him and say, you're my savior, you're my Lord. I receive you. I accept you. All my life is for you. How can he give you power? If you turn yourself and you back him, you say, I don't want to see the face of Jesus. I don't want to come to Jesus. I don't want his forgiveness. If you turn your back unto him, I will he give you. But when you turn and you face Christ, and you say you are my savior, and you say you are my Lord, and you say you are my redeemer, I have, you have a throne in my heart coming, coming, and set you in my life. As you face him like that, you'll say, stretch out your hand spiritually, you'll stretch out your hand, you raise up your hand, you put power in your life. Behold, I give unto your power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over and over and over. Do you have your Bible there? And over all the power of the enemy. Finish. I said, finish. It's done. It is done over all the power of the enemy. That's what people who run away from Christ, that's what they are missing. Those who don't give their lives to Christ, what, that's what they are missing. Those who say, I will think about it. All the time you are thinking about it, shall I come to Christ? Shall I not come to Christ? You're missing the power over all the power of the enemy. But as you say, 
today, today, I don't want to waste any moment, any minute, any more. Now I have power over all the power of the enemy. And look at this, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nothing. See now. Nothing. Any potion, any concoction they make in the depths of the river will not hurt you. Any decision, any covenant they make in darkness, deep darkness, and they say, this is for so and so. It's a waste of time. It will not get to you. Somebody went to buy padlock, and then when he bought the padlock, he said, I am after so and so. I'm going to lock his success, lock his power, lock his health, lock every good thing, and then uh, they mention your name, and then they lock that thing, and they throw it in the sea, waste of time. Bad luck will determine your destiny. No utterance of the enemy will destroy your destiny. If they come in the day, you overcome. If they come in the night, you overcome. You are so peculiar and so special in the hand of God, nothing shall by any means or you. As you give your life to Christ, and this is the night, the moment you say, yes, Lord, that promise is fulfilled. The moment you say, Lord, I come, I belong to you, that thing uh, will happen. And then uh, nothing, no cancer, no tuberculosis, no hypertension, Nothing, no diabetes. Nothing, urinating, 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 and they tell you, you are going, you are going, you are going, uh uh, you are not uh, something they are selling at their bazaar, and then going, 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 gone. No, you are not ready to go yet. That diabetes will be healed in Jesus' name. You see, this, this, and this. But thank God, nothing, nothing, nothing shall by any means hurt you. Now, look at verse 20 here. In verse 20, notwithstanding, in this, rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you. It says, don't stop there. I'm healed. Don't stop there. I overcome evil spirits. Don't stop there. I overcome the angry lion. Don't stop there. I am a victor over all diseases. Don't stop there. But rather, move on now, move on. Rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. My name is written in heaven. When you give your life to the Lord and say, Lord, here am I. Totally now, spirit, soul, and body, I belong to you. The Lord will write your name in heaven. If there is anything bad connected with that name, they call you by a particular name and in your language. That name signifies bad luck evil, curse, yoke, traditional, whatever, that thing is connected with your name. When that name is written in heaven, all the bad, bad things connected with your name and connected with your background, territorial spirit, water spirit, mummy spirit, whatever, all those things will be expunged and extracted and taken away, and your name, pure and perfect, will be written in heaven, and then angels will be watching over you.
The people who are not born again, that's what they mean. They don't understand that this is what God will do. Now that you understand, tonight you belong to Christ in Jesus' name. Let's come to number three now. Number three is abundant life. This will be to the cross. Abundant life distributed from the cross. Distribution is coming now. Eternal life will be distributed to whosoever will call on the name of the Lord. Abundant life, happy life, healthy life, successful life, uh, raised up life, progressive life will come to you now as you give your life to the Lord in Jesus' name. Now, John chapter 10, we're looking at verse 10. John chapter 10, verse 10. The thief cometh not, but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. That's the devil, the adversary, the lion, the angry lion. He comes, and he comes to steal. The little joy you have, he wants to steal that away. And the little peace you have, he wants to steal that away. And eventually to kill and to destroy. It's like, you know, the thieves come and they are at the door. And while they are trying to break the door or break the window, then high-level soldiers, powerful people, and to the thief, they come and immediately they come all those people trying to break the window break the door they all run away from your house i didn't hear a good amen there Paul said the thief is there he comes to steal and to kill and to destroy he says but don't worry about that i am calm i am calm I am calm. He comes to you. He will not, he'll not do like a thief and break the door. You have to open the door yourself. I stand at the door and I knock. If anyone will open the door, that's you tonight. I say that's you tonight. I will come in and then look at what he'll do. I am calm. That they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. Tonight, life is available for you. Tonight, eternal life is available for you. Tonight, abundant life is available for you. Tonight, salvation is available for you. Healing is available for you. Health is available for you. And victory over every enemy is available for you. It's coming. Christ has come. And when you accept him, when you receive him, that eternal life will come. Look at, um, look at Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Ephesians chapter 3, we're looking at verse 20. It says, now. Now, when is your salvation? Now, when is your deliverance? When is your abundant life? When is your happy, healthy life? When is the power from heaven going to come upon your life? Now, unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask or seek according to the power that worketh in us. A power is coming in your heart right now, in your spirit now, that anything that is standing before you to hinder you from having salvation, eternal life, abundant life, that power will knock them up your life in Jesus' name. And then in verse 21, it says unto him, the glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages. This abundant life throughout all ages, world without age. That is, until the end and beyond the end, 
this life is available for you. Once again, I congratulate you that you came at the right time tonight when God, through Christ, is distributing abundant life and eternal life to everyone. And whosoever will call on the name of Jesus will be saved. Whosoever comments unto me, I really know wise cast out. You are that whosoever joy has come for you tonight. Mm. Wherever you are and where you indicate and you say, yes, Lord, I accept you. You are my Savior. You are my Lord. All my guilt, all my condemnation, all my sin, you wipe away when we were yet without strength. When we were sinners, Christ came and he died for us and he died for you. I said he died for you. And tonight, the joy bells again on your behalf. And tonight is that night, is the night of your salvation, of your blessing, of your abundant life. And the moment you yield unto the Lord, it will be done. Yeah. Into somebody there. Yeah. It will be done. The old life, the weak life, the trampled life, the dirty life, the condemned life, everything will pass away and a new life will come unto you there today. Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. What are you? Yeah. It's about and eyes closed. It's bowed, and eyes closed. The Lord has located you where you are. He said, I've been looking for you. I want to exchange your downtrodden life. I want to exchange your pitiable life with the life of heaven, with eternal life. And as you yield yourself to the Lord, Forgiveness will come, salvation will come, and the goodness of God, the grace of God will come in your life. Your life the night and you are ready for that agape Lord on the cross of Calvary for you in particular. Raise up your heart wherever you are. I say, Lord, I'm here. I accept the message you have sent to me. I receive you have shown on my behalf. Lord, I'm here. I give myself to you. Where are you? Raise up your hand. Yes, there on the left. God bless you there. In my frontier, God bless you. Over there on the right, farther back. God bless you. Anywhere you are now, you are hearing over the radio, you are hearing over the television, or you are on the Facebook, or you are anywhere you are connected with us. Praise the Lord, abundant life, eternal life has come to you today. Raise up your hand. If you're raising up your hand, please stand up. Please stand up. Stand up for your salvation. Stand up for your healing. Stand up for your deliverance. Stand up for the joy. Stand up for the love of God to be brought unto you right now. Stand up, stand up wherever you are. You stand up, stand up for Jesus like soldiers of the cross. And you're telling the Lord, here I am. I will not belong to the devil anymore. I will not belong to darkness anymore. I offer myself. I surrender myself unto the Lord, my Savior, my Redeemer. Raise up your hand and stand up for a you way for you don't miss your chance tonight of the salvation don't miss chance tonight of being life coming upon you as you're standing up you tell the lord i forsake my past i throw away my past life i turn away from that dirty life defiled life and i turn unto christ and I receive him as my savior. Once you receive him, he receives you too. He doesn't allow a minute to pass. And then his forgiveness comes. 
His salvation comes. His new life comes unto you. Tell the Lord, as I come, I'll not go back to Satan. I'll not go back to sin. I'll not go back to my old ways anymore. I receive Jesus as my personal Savior. In Jesus' name, we pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for...